Greetings, brothers and sisters. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Methodist Church in Lucia Circuit extends a hearty, happy, and joyous Trinity Sunday greeting to you. Welcome to all of you joining us today for worship. We offer special greetings to all those celebrating a birthday, anniversary, or any other special occasion this week. May the good Lord bless and keep you. sincere condolences and pray that God's peace surround and support you during this period. We are encouraged to remain committed to our financial support of God's work through the church. Your tithes, offerings and donations can be deposited to the Republic Bank St. Lucia, account number 950-1000. 59919. We thank you for your faithful giving. We bless God for all those taking part in our service this morning. We acknowledge your dedicated efforts and we pray God's richest blessings upon you and yours. Our preacher for today is Reverend Tinuku Smith. We look forward to the word that he will bring us today and pray God's continued blessings on him in ministry. May the Lord bless us all on the holy occasion of Trinity Sunday. Let us never lose faith in our Maker and always love our God. Brothers and sisters, I invite us now to ready ourselves for worship. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, as God's delight wisdom rejoiced before the Lord, as the heavens and the earth were brought forth, may we too find delight as wisdom calls, uh, calls to us now. I do greet each and every one of us as we celebrate today on the 12th of June, 2022, this Festival of Holy Trinity. I pray that the blessings of our God Almighty, the Triumph God, will be upon us as, he, as we worship him in spirit and in truth. We continue in the spirit of worship to our call to worship, and I invite us to respond appropriately. O Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Your voice causes the sea to roar, the winds to howl. You have set your glory above the heavens. The moon and the stars sing your praises. What are human beings that you are mindful of us? Who are we that you care for us? Yet you have made us a little lower than the angels. You have crowned us with glory and honor. O Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Invite us now with the opening hymn, Sing to the Glory of God, Hymn 8, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Invite us the time of prayer, adoration, confession, and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Triumph God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, creator of the universe of heaven and earth. Lord Jehovah, Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Roth, Rofe, our healer, you whom is our light and our salvation, our stronghold, our shepherd, whom we shall not be in want, you who prepare a table in the presence of our enemies, you who comfort us, in which our cup overflows. We pray in the to the God, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Redeemer, begotten of the Father, sent incarnated word and wisdom, who came upon the world to take away the sins of the world. We pray to, Son, to the Holy Spirit, our Redeemer, the Advocate, who leads us into all truth, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we praise and adore you at this time and in this season. This festival of Holy Trinity reminding us in the fullness of God, transforming us, the family of God whom we are in communion with and who is in communion with each other. The family God whom in the beginning resolved to create us in your image and in your likeness. Family God, transformative God, renewing God, may your name be glorified. We pray in confession for the failures that we have done. Even as we have been created in your image, we have fallen short of your glory. The resolute in the beginning, which reminds us let us create human being in your image. And we know, O oh God, because of sin and the intrusion of sin into our lives and into our nature, has distorted that harmony, that peace, that connection, and that fellowship, that sharing. And we pray, O oh God, that we have failed in so many times to be the reflection of the triumph, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Forgive us that our words, forgive us that our deeds, forgive us that our relationship with you and with each other has not been truthful and also, O oh God, has not been the best it can be in light of your life and the fullness that is ours in Christ Jesus. But we do thank you for Jesus Christ, who have come to reconcile us to you, who have come that we may have the access back into the family of God, who have come that we may have the promise of the Holy Spirit that who testifies and reminds our own human spirit that we are children of the living God. For that, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for life, we give you thanks for the privilege to be called sons and daughters of the living God. We give you thanks that we are co-heirs with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We give you thanks for the redemptive work that flows in the grace that is in and through us, that enables us, O oh God, as people encounter us, that they are drawn to you, the living God. Today, as we worship you, we adore, we confess, and we give thanks. We bring all these prayers in and through the name of Jesus, 
our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So continue in worship. The voices in praise, 395, Father of everlasting grace. the word, I invite us to pray together the collect. Almighty God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us stand fast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversary, adversities through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading comes to us. 
from John chapter 16, verse 12 to 15. Glory to you, O God. It reads, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to Christ our Lord. Our hymn, VIP, 159, Breathe on me, breath of God. Invite us now to come to God in prayer as we reflect on God's word. Let us pray. As we celebrate today the festival of Holy Trinity, reflecting on the depth of who you are and what it means for us who believe and trust in you, that your very nature and very character informs, sustains, and directs life in all its totality. We pray that your word as it is sent forth, the word of the Father, who is the Son who became men, died and rose again, ascended into heaven is the wisdom that calls unto us to have understanding and revelation that is enabled by your Holy Spirit that guides and leads. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Redeemer. We pray in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today, I invite us to reflect on this theme, a spirit-filled life is a life justified by faith. 
A spirit-filled life is a life justified by faith. There are many understandings that now are portrayed in our world of a spirit-filled life. Some are reflected in the abilities of what people can do and what they are enabled to do. But today I draw to our attention from the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 1 to 5 in which Paul in a series of writing from Romans chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4 settles that a life in which we are driven, led, inspired through the Spirit of God is a life that is solely justified by faith. In this reflection, two questions that I would like us to answer. What qualifies us to a spirit-filled life? Second, what sustains us for a spirit-filled life? These two questions are important and as uh, we meditate on our reading today, I hope and pray through the Word and the Spirit it will bring to life the will of God to enable us to understand that a spirit-filled life is a life which is a life justified by faith. Without the Spirit in our lives, we are literally walking dead. Last week, we were reminded that we must be influenced and led by the Spirit. And also, we must have an intimate relationship with God as we are adopted as children of God to fully understand and experience that we are able to call Abba Father, crying out to God as we experience that intimate relationship with God. And also, the infusion of that new life that the Spirit alone enables. But also, we are reminded in Romans chapter 8, verse 16, that it is the very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Romans 8, 16. I also draw to our attention Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit is the, the human spirit is the lamb of, God, of the Lord, searching every innermost part. But today, Paul exhorts the church in Rome and brings to their attention what qualifies a person to a spirit-filled life is not one position. It is not one's who undergoes the different rituals of the church, but it is one which is justified by faith and faith alone. Romans chapter 5 verse 1, it says, Through whom we have obtained grace, to, the, to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. In verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have the peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here Paul highlights that one is qualified only and justified only by the faith. And this faith it has consequences that enables the peace of God that comes to us through Jesus Christ and also, it clears the way for a pro, for an, that we are able to obtain access to the grace and stand before God because of what Jesus Christ has already done. We are in a world which people are judged by what they do, what they can do with their own effort and accord. We call people a doctor, a nurse, we call members because of their confirmation status. But a spirit-filled life is not determined by any effort that we do, nor 
through the objectivity or subjectivity of our lives, but it is through the justification through our faith in Jesus Christ alone. The consequences of being made right by our faith are peace with God and hope, as Paul reminds us today. And it encourages us, brothers and sisters in Christ, that a spirit-filled life is not one that is influenced merely by our efforts, but it is one that is deeply rooted in our relationship that is founded on the faith that we have as we continue each day to trust Christ more and more. Paul was clear to a community, a community in which people were shamed from those in higher up in authority and society for their ability and their life, what they are able to accomplish, or their social, their social standing. But Paul reminded that none of that matters before God. What matters before God and how one is justified before God, in which one will receive the spirit and be spirit-filled in one's life, is determined by faith and faith alone in Jesus Christ. This reminds us as a community that we must be a faith-driven community, that everything that we do must be grounded in the faith and our trust in the merits of Christ and Christ alone. Yes, there are things that are important that we must participate with Christ in his death and his resurrection. There are our contributions and our efforts, but all of that are without merit if it is not channeled through and by faith in Christ Jesus. We are reminded in Hebrews chapter 11 that without faith it is impossible to please God. Some of us have tried and continue to try. Some of us has given a lot of effort in our lives as we are encountering so many things in life. But we are reminded that a spirit-filled life, what qualifies you and me, brothers and sisters in Christ, what makes you a Christian, is not what you do, but whom you believe in, and that is Jesus Christ. As you put your faith and trust in Christ, what Christ has already done, as Paul says, therefore, it's a past. It's something that has already happened. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He continues in verse 2, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and which we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. So the word of God through Paul today reminds you and me, where is our life of faith? How far is our life of faith and trust in God has brought us? And as we are reminded, that a spirit-filled life is not based and founded on our abilities, but is founded on the justifying work of God in Jesus Christ that justifies us through faith in Jesus alone. And encourage us of our birth right as believers, that our very being, as the promise has been made to us, when we come to faith in Jesus Christ and when the justifying work of God takes its root and toll in our life, our life is one that is spirit-filled, that enjoys the peace of God and the fullness of God every day. In the Old Testament, peace is defined as the holistic well-being because the cause of alienation has been removed. We are no longer the enemy of God. 
and we have become children of the living God. And all of these are made available to us through the work of the Spirit as we are filled with the Spirit of God and we have made right with God through our faith in Jesus Christ. You have been made right with God, not because you are right, not because you have the privilege of right as you in your own accord, but because trusting in Christ and Christ alone. So the first question is answered to us today. What qualifies us to a spirit-filled life? What qualifies you and me, brothers and sisters, is Jesus Christ alone and our faith in him. What he has already done, what he continues to do to us and through us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and what awaits us when he will bring into completion his salvation plan and his redeeming plan for each and every one of us in the whole world. So this leads us to the second question. What sustains us as a spirit, with a spirit-filled life? We know that each day we can be deprived of the Holy Spirit because of sin. One of the writers, Heron No One, says, How can we live in the midst of the world marked by fear, hatred, and violence and not be destroyed by it? Indeed, we are living in trying times. We live and he continues by saying, we live in the world, yet we are not affected by it because of the Spirit of God, the sustaining grace of God that continues to help us through. But I draw to us in our text today, in verse 2 and verse 3, that we are sustained because poured in us is the love of God into our hearts, that no matter what happened around us, our emotions, our thoughts are sustained to continue to enjoy the fullness of God in our life, no matter what. Verse 2 of Romans chapter 5 says, Through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. He continues with verse 3, and not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions, knowing that afflictions produce endurance, and endurance produce character, and character produces hope. And verse 5, hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are sustained in our spirit-filled life through the outpouring of God's love into our hearts. That outpouring of God's love in our lives gives us hope, and when in the time of our sharing in the glory of God, and not only that, it also gives us hope even when we are faced with afflictions. This is important because at times we have hope and only have driven by hope when things happening around us seems to be at the best. But Paul reminds the Christians at Rome, they have hope when they are sharing in the glory of God. They also have hope when they have afflictions. And their knowledge of afflictions helps them to endure. And also when they continue to endure, it builds up their character. And when their character is built, they continue on in a life of hope and are never put to shame. It gives us the assurance, brothers and sisters in Christ, that there is never a condition of life whether we are sharing in the glory of God or we are in the afflictions of this world, that we will continue to be sustained because
goes forward into our lives is the love of God through the Holy Spirit. I draw to our attention the relationship between our mind and our emotion, or heart and head. Sometimes when we exercise our minds, the things that we understand have much a profound impact upon us that the emotions are moved in response, and this leads to healthy experience. Provided, of course, that the information producing the emotion reaction is true. On the other occasion, emotions are allowed to govern actions, either in direct conflict with our minds or without the mind being brought into play. But here Paul reminds the Christian the seat of emotion which is the heart, poured into it is the love of God that affects the action and affects the reaction of one's purpose, one person, that no matter what they face in life, whether it's sharing in the glory of God or sharing in the afflictions of life, continue to propel a positive mentality to face life and be a better person sustained by the Spirit of God. This runs deep for us as Christians. We live in a time when a spirit-filled life is at times solely defined by one's ability. And when one's ability fails, we think that all hope is lost. But as God's people, what sustains us is the love of God poured in our heart. Our emotions are being sustained by the presence and love of God that no matter what you face in life, no matter the depths of your struggles, no matter the depths of the crisis that you face, you are never overcome. You are sustained by the spirit of the living God reminding you that the God you serve is not only the God of the mountain, not only God of glory, not only God of victory, but also in the valleys and afflictions of life, that our afflictions can help us to endurance, and our endurance can build our character, and our character can give us hope. And we can affect the world that we live in in a positive way. A spirit-filled life is a life justified by faith. I call on us as a Christian community. What qualifies us to a spirit-filled life? Faith. What sustains us to a spirit-filled life is the pouring of the love of God into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. No matter the circumstances you, fa you face, you can still continue through with the hope that you have peace with God, obtain that access, and you are justified by faith and continually sustained by the, by the Holy Spirit as it fills you, guides you, sustains you, whatever you are facing. It is my prayer that as we celebrate today the festival of Holy Trinity, the fullness of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that each and every one of us, whatever you are facing, may experience the fullness of our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, through a spirit-filled life, a life justified by faith, a life sustained by the pouring of God's love into our hearts, that informs, direct our whole life, that will enable us to live in this world as Henry no one says, how can we live in the midst of the world marked by fear, hatred, and violence and not be destroyed? He continues, we live in this world yet we are not affected by it because what affects us is the love of God in Jesus Christ as 
we are justified by faith and faith alone that sustains us through life. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we reflect on God's word, the hymn of Respond, hymn 307, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. invite our children who are listening and tuning in as I share briefly to us a short exhortation to our children. Our children, um, today we celebrate the festival of Holy Trinity. We worship one God who in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And like to share with us that it is not easy to give an explanation of Holy Trinity, and at some times, to us as children, it could be confusing that we worship one God who is in Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And some would say there are three. But Trinity means that we worship one God who is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. And today, I share with us 
that there are things in our faith that we may not fully ex can explain, but we can trust God for who he is. There was one day a priest walking along seashore trying to give a clear explanation of Trinity. He was struggling three, one. In his mind, he was saying, no, there's three. No, there is one. And as he was trying to put together the explanation, the reasoning, trying to reason out, to, pe to give data, empirical thoughts, explanation, he came across a young child digging through the sand, a big, nice, round sand hole, and with a seashell running down by the sea, fetching water in the seashell and pouring it into the sand hole. And as he was watching and observing, he came close to the child and asked this child, what are you trying to do? And the child explained to the priest, what I am trying to do is I'm trying to fetch that a lot of water and all the water of this ocean and fill it in this sand hole. And the priest said, no, that is unreasonable. You cannot do that because when you pour in a sand hole, it will just drain back into the ocean. And the young child says, what you are trying also to fully understand, you would never be able to fully understand. You ought just to believe. One of the early church fathers, Tutelian, once said around 300 AD says that some aspects of our life, it's absurd. You cannot explain, but you still can believe. So to our children, the message today, there may be some aspects of our faith. There may be some things that we cannot fully understand or we won't able to fully explain. But we still can believe and trust in God for who he is. So it is my prayer to you, our young children, I know that we have critical minds and I encourage us to do so and have so. But there is also some aspects in our life and faith that we cannot fully give explanations for, but we can still trust who God is. He's still that same loving God who lives, who reigns, who is in control, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of God the Father. Son and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we bring to you our children as they articulate life, faith, as they relate signs, God, faith, and life. At times, questions arise. And we pray, O oh God, that you may help them understand. But even with our finite understanding and we cannot fully know the revelation we cannot fully understand the revelation but we pray that we can that we can trust the revelation that comes to us in Jesus Christ through the revealing work of your Holy Spirit that they can be blessed by your presence guided by your love and as they enjoy the outpouring of your love into their hearts through your Holy Spirit. As uh, this academic year comes to a close, a few more weeks into the month of June and July, before the summer break, I pray as they begin, some have already passed exams, have already wrote, written exams, and some about to. And as they finalize, this final academic year, may you instill within them not only the academic curriculums, but also, O oh God, the holistic life that is offered to us in the triumph God of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that molds them, that bless them, that informs them, 
and brings them life and salvation. Pray for our families, pray for our schools, that we'll continue to provide environments that is conducive to learning and formation, that we can give balance and give a total holistic education life for our children, not only knowing academic subjects, but their lives will be totally molded and formed into the image that you have created them to be. We pray, O oh God, at this time, for a lot that is happening in our communities, as we intercede for those who are in need, we pray for your presence, evoking your presence upon this land. Wisdom and understanding will come upon our leaders, come upon the leaders at various levels in our community. We know that you are present. We know that you are at work. We pray that you will continue to do what you do best, bring about order, bring about design, bring about functionality, bring about light in the midst of darkness. Bring about health in the midst of sickness. Bring about healing and recovering to those who are sick. We pray, O oh God, for those who are in need spiritually, materialistically, socially, relationally, emotionally, that your presence and your provisions will come. And like the Samis, may their cup overflow. May goodness and mercy Follow us all the days of our lives. We bring to you a special prayer as we intercede for world conflicts. We pray for world peace. We bring before you an ask that peace may reign in hearts and minds. May peace may reign in those who believe in you and trust in you. And may your kingdom come. And may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Even as we await, even as we challenge with the, the realities of the afflictions of what is now realized, we pray, O oh God, that we look forward to the time when you will bring to completion all that you have planned and purposed for us all. This is the prayer as we bless our children as we intercede, we pray in and through the name of Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. We repeat together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now sing our final hymn, hymn 387, Savior again to thy dear name we raise.
as uh, we draw to the conclusion of our service today, is my prayer that uh, we as God's community continue in the spirit of celebrating the festive of Holy Trinity. And also as uh, we in St. Lucia Methodist Circuit also send our deepest condolences to Reverend Adel Odol as tomorrow the 13th of June as we as a Methodist community celebrate her life at the Georgetown Mount Cook Cemetery where the Kingstown Chattable Circuit in the Kingstown Chapel which the thanksgiving of her life will be celebrated in the laying to rest at the Georgetown Mount Cook Cemetery. We as a community join with the family in our prayers and also pray that the peace of God that surpass all understanding will be with the family, with Reverend Odol and their son in this difficult time. The benediction. Go with the blessing of the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit leads us into truth. Go with the blessing of holy wisdom. God's wisdom is our delight. Go with the blessing of God, of the Son of God. God's inheritance filled us with joy. Go with the grace and peace. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with each and every one of us, now and forevermore. Amen.